Okay, hold on. Take start over. So this is Monday, April twentieth. Right? Hello? In there? Yes. Yes. Okay, so Monday, April 20th, and we're starting with Gmail. 420. What does that mean? A marijuana thing? Some marijuana? Thing? Okay. okay. So, um, we're going we're gonna to focus on Gmail this week. Gmail is one of the eight apps that we focus on, and it's an important app. Why is Gmail important? Okay, to get mail. Right. That's one reason it's important is to get mail. So on our list of eight Google apps that we focus on, we've got Gmail that we're gonna put that in the center this week. What's another app? Uh, well circles is a sub app. We call the sub app of what? Google Plus, right? Okay. What's another app? Drive. Who said that? Okay. Monica. Calendar. YouTube. Okay. What'd you say in California? Go ahead. YouTube. YouTube. Maps. YouTube, right? Maps. Maps. Six. Okay, what's we've got two more. Docs is part of a sub app of Drive. Okay, what else? Huh? Voice. And what else? Hangouts is part of Google Plus. If I say to you, what is the gateway, what is the doorway to the internet, what do you say? Chrome. Chrome, right, Chrome. Okay. So Gmail works inside of and with all of these other apps. And so I can assure you, when you, the highest chance that you're going to get a job is if you're able to talk about you know the cloud. If you're in your interview and you're able to talk about you know the cloud, huge value, huge value. And when you're sitting in your interview, you need to be able to talk uh, very briefly, very quickly about what they say, well, what do you mean the cloud? What's the cloud? You need to be able to rattle off these apps. So it's important that you have them in your book, and you should have them ha as a diagram as well as just listing. And you might want to put them in order. You might say there are um, two that start with the C, D. Uh, you know, you might figure out some way to make it easy to remember what they are. So when you're on the spot, and they say, "Well, what are the what apps do you know?" You've got something that you can say, you can talk about. And it starts with Gmail. And part of the reason it starts with Gmail is Gmail is the first app that Google did after search. So when they started, they had this idea of an algorithm, a search algorithm. This is probably when they were at Stanford. Um, Larry Page and Sergey Brin. When they were at Stanford, they probably came up with this idea of the search algorithm. They tried to license it. They tried to do things. And then they had to go into business themselves to prove the product worked. It worked so good. They needed more money to get more computer space, time, hardware, et cetera. It took off. And then they were a search company. They owned search. Meanwhile, Yahoo is doing a lot more. Yahoo had Yahoo Mail. They had their own sort of search engine. They're going off on the way of having a portal so you could look at sports and entertainment and things like that. Uh, Microsoft had Hotmail. 
and it had its uh, Internet Explorer um, and their version of search. Uh, I don't really remember what it is now, but Microsoft had their thing. And there was some other stuff out there, competing products. But uh, at this point, the market was people getting email accounts. Today, who gets who gets an email account for the first time today? What kind of people get email accounts for the very first time? Their very first email. No, who gets an email account for the very first time today? Students where? No, not here, in the world. Yeah. yeah, today, people that get an email account for the first time are generally kids, okay? Because adults already have one or more, mostly more, email accounts. Fifteen years ago, who mostly got email accounts? Adults mostly got email accounts because most adults didn't have email accounts in the year 2000. So the market has changed. So back then, Gmail's opportunity to get big fast after search was to get into email. Do you think a company today that was starting out or the story out in the last five years would jump into email as their second app? Huh? Who said no? Agreed. Did Facebook come out with email? No. Twitter? Um, Instagram? They do? I didn't know that. Who has a Facebook email? Why not? <laughs> I see. But does anybody use it? No, okay. So the point so so that proves the point that email is different than it was before. Today it's mostly getting kids getting their first email accounts. Uh, when Gmail when Google started Gmail, there it was a scramble for adults. Of the workplace. So that's why they went at Gmail first, whereas if Facebook or an email account after search, that's why Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, these people don't even bother giving you an email account, right? Because what, what do you need it for? You already have an email account. You don't need it. But Google built all of their apps really based upon your Gmail account. And you notice now that with your Gmail account, you use them, it gets you into everything. If you don't have a Gmail account, you can't get into anything. So this is unique compared to Microsoft, Apple, um, and other people. That uh, with uh, Google, the apps that they have, all the Google apps are good, but they're all designed to work together using your Gmail account as the common denominator for all of them. And it didn't used to be that way. So it was, I think, about a year ago, you had to sync your YouTube account, your, your YouTube, with your Gmail. It wasn't automatic. And I think it was the same thing with your Google Plus, because those were apps that were created independent. But today, um, the, your Gmail account is what controls all of these other things, these other apps. So if you go into a business and you say, I'm going to bring you to the cloud, what do you, you need to give everybody? A Gmail account. All employees need to get a Gmail account. And there's two fundamental types of Gmail accounts. One is the type of Gmail account that you guys have, and the other one is the type of account that staff has. What's the difference? What's the difference between your Gmail and my Gmail? Student. It's a password. And the difference is, one is mine is not free. 
to yours ends in at Gmail. So mine, that's Gladius Business Corp. That is the Gmail account. I log on to Gmail through that. So when you go to a business and you talk about, well, the first thing we have to do is get everybody on Gmail, get everybody a Gmail account, does that mean they stop using the business account? And one person says yes. You would say no. You would say no. You can just guess. <laughs> you can't do both. You can't say yes and then no. Okay, so the answer is you don't need to get rid of your other accounts. So some people here have accounts that are ended at Lavoche Publishing or at spqr.us. You can set it up in Gmail. Right, Robert has one. So you can set it up in Gmail as a forwarding account. And we'll get that set up tomorrow. We're going to do that tomorrow. But there are two fundamental types of Gmail accounts. One is paid, one is not paid. If you go to an employer, ideally, you want them to pay. You want them to have paid accounts. That's $5 per account per month. They might think that's too expensive. Okay, so well, we don't need to do that. We'll just assign everybody a Gmail account, and we'll tie it to their existing Pets of Pets account, their existing work email account. And um, other than when you log on, you have to use your Gmail account to log on. But once you're logged on, your inbox has all of your business emails. So how does that work? Somebody want to tell me how that works? In California, how does that work? How can you have all of your work email going into your Gmail account? So this is important to know because if you're convincing somebody to hire you because you can help them get to the cloud, or one of the benefits you bring is you can help them get to the cloud, you need to be able to answer how. So you go into a business, do they have work email accounts right now? Yeah. I don't think, if you're applying for, let's say it this way, if you're applying for a job at a company that doesn't have their own email accounts, you probably don't want to work there. So for example, when we started with Lavoche Publishing, what they did is they had email accounts that were uh, Lavoche Editor at Hotmail. Okay. Or Lavoche Advertising at Hotmail. Does that look professional? Right. Why not? Yeah, because they know it's free. And then and the idea is you can't even afford your own email. This is free. Gmail's free too. But you would you want to have it that said Lavoche Editor at Gmail? Would you want that compared to editor at the Voce publishing.com? Which would you rather have? Yeah, at the bottom, this is professional. If you go to work for a company and there and you see or you're thinking about working for a company and their email ends in Hotmail or Yahoo or Gmail or something like other than the name of the company, run fast and far. Okay, because that's not where you want to be today. Because today there's no excuse for not having this. It only costs ten dollars a year to have a um, a dot com email or domain. It only costs ten dollars a year for a domain. 
and it might even be less. Than that. So if you're going to go work at a company and they don't even have their own domain, it's not really a legitimate serious company. Now, you might find guys that have a good company and they're this way, and then you, your first statement is, we got to get you to be professional. We can't be using this at Hotmail anymore. I can help do that. We can do it for free. So this is an example of not good. If it ends in at Hotmail or at Yahoo or at Gmail, that's not professional. And even when it comes to your personal resumes, you should not have them come from your Hotmail or Gmail account because it doesn't make you look professional. So, but the question was, if people are on a free account, how can they still use their Lavoche Publishing, their atwork.com email? So in Gmail, there's a feature, that a function that we'll deal with tomorrow where you can set up separate accounts. So you go in and it says, oh, you want to send from atwork.com? You want to send from this account? So you go in there and you set up and say, yeah, I want to be able to send from my Gmail account. I want to be able to send from here. And so fundamentally what Gmail is doing is when you write an email, it sends it to here, and that sends it out. has a little bit of code. You give it your username and password for this account. It logs on as if it's you. It creates an email as if it's you and sends it. Okay? So when the person gets it, it doesn't say Gmail, it doesn't say at gmail.com. It says at, at work.com. Now also On this account, you set it up to forward to your Gmail. So when this account is set up, so like Robert has a .sp, uh, .spqr.us, Telus, and Dan have at um, Chowtuti Publishing, Loboche Publishing. Do you have one, Safira? For any Chowtuti, Phyllis, you've got something. Um, when I set those accounts up, I set it up so that it forwards any emails to this account. So you would say to the employer, okay, the first thing we do is we've got to get you on Gmail, set up the Gmail account, and then we forward all of these, their existing emails to this account. So any email that comes to here, what happens to it? It's in your inbox over here. And when we set this up, which we'll do tomorrow, when we set this up, it sends from here. Yeah, somebody there, the, the network administrator would do that. For the person, you would set up, like we do here at LTCLV, you set up a, a structure that would be maybe you know, the company name and some kind of number at Gmail. Just like we do here. LTCLV dot your name dot the day you start. That's what the email. Is. So you go to the company, we, we set up Gmail accounts for everybody. And you have a generic password. And then when you go into your account, you forward it, not forward, you set up your account to send through your work account. And you're on your Gmail. So what we're going to do tomorrow, what we're going to do tomorrow is exactly what you would do at work. You say to the boss, we need to set up Gmail accounts, and set them all up just like Phyllis does to your Gmail account, right? Okay, we're going to set up a Gmail account for everybody. The webmaster, the network administrator, 
is going to then forward all emails to that account. That's what I do. I forward them to your Gmail account. And then what you have to do is go into your Gmail account so that you can send through this account. So there's three people involved. Well, that's the first thing we do. At that point, that business now looks the same to the outside world. They can receive emails from the outside world just like they did the day before, and they can send emails to the outside world just like they did before. But this is the thing that needs to be involved to do that. Okay? So it sounds more complicated than it is. Really, the message to take back is it's not hard. It's not hard to do. It sounds harder than it is. We're going to do it tomorrow. We're talking about it today so that tomorrow is considered our review. The key part that we need to get when it comes to Gmail is that we have to learn to use Gmail as professionals. And we don't do that right now. We use it as amateurs. So right now, so one of the things you need is to um, send. Another thing is signature. Collaboration. Or is productivity. Okay, so you can kind of see those on the map. Be able to send. So to be use Gmail in a professional way, you need to be able to send and receive from a professional account, not from your Gmail account. You need to have a signature. Who doesn't have a signature on their Gmail right now? Just Louise, right? Right, right, Phyllis? Okay, everyone else, when you send an email, it should have your name, student, Larson. You have that? Yeah, okay. So you need to have a signature. When, so when somebody sees, receives an email from you, what's on there? Name, what else? Okay, your title. What else? Huh? Contact information, right? And if you're really good, you have some promotional stuff like like us on Facebook or a link to the website or just stuff so that people can uh, know more about you. This is what all professional companies have. There's no excuse if you just have a carpet cleaning business or a dog walking business. There's no reason you can't look professional. So those are the first two things. Three is collaboration. And when we go into Google Labs tomorrow to tweak your uh, settings in Gmail, we'll make sure that you have all of the stuff turned on so it's easy to collaborate with other people and other apps. And then productivity. So in productivity, there's two primary things. One is canned responses. Canned response. What do you think that is, Velvet? What's a canned response? Yeah. So it's a response that you're going to use all the time. So uh, let's think of a business. What, what, what did you used to do, Dominic? Refrigeration. Okay, refrigeration. Let's say so for a refrigeration company. You might have a, an email that you send out for annual cleaning. Let's just say there's such a thing, right, as an annual cleaning. Um, so you would have one email as a canned response email that has most of the stuff in it. All you need to do is customize it with the customer's name, address, phone number, whatever. It makes it very easy to send out emails. So here, we have a canned response that's welcome to Larson Training Centers. So when you start here, you get an email from me that says, welcome to Larson Training Centers. That's a canned response. I don't type that whole thing. I just go click a couple buttons, do it, and then I can fill it in. It's like a template. That would be another way to look at it. Okay? They call it canned response. Gmail is called a canned response. The other one. There's actually two more. 
One is called Yesware. That's a third-party software. Yesware has canned responses or templates in it. I don't use it for that. But one of the things that Yesware does is it tells you if somebody has opened the email. Who thinks that's valuable? One person? OK. Ed, you don't think it's valuable? OK. So imagine, why would it be valuable to know if somebody's opened the email? That they looked at. You know, if you're if you're expecting, hey, let's go do this, or I'm sending you asked me for this, I'm sending you this. Quite often, it's of value to know that they actually opened it. Especially if you're waiting for them to do something. So like I'll send somebody an email and uh, then I'll check to see when they opened it. Well, you can't see that they actually read it. You can just see they opened it. You can assume that they read it on the basis of why open the email if you're not going to read it. And people are held accountable. If they open the email, you're held accountable. You can't really say to somebody, yeah, I got your email, but I, you can say, yeah, I got your email, but I didn't open it. Yeah. Oh, well, you better, so I wouldn't say that way. I would say, well, you better check, see who else has access to your email. You maybe didn't get it because it wasn't in your inbox anymore. It was moved down to open. Boomerang. So, but what I would say is, well, then you should check to see who has access to your email because I got a notice that it was open 15 minutes after I sent it two weeks ago. That is very powerful for work in business. And it also gives you an idea of how other people operate. Like if you send an email and you notice that within Five minutes of every email you send somebody, they've opened it. What does that tell you about the person? They're sitting by their computer or they have on their smartphone. They are going to follow through. So if you send somebody important information, um, if you send somebody important information, you expect an answer back, and you know they always read the thing within five minutes, and you don't get a response. What could you start doing at that point? Or you think, huh, they didn't want to respond. Because they always open things and respond within five minutes. They didn't on this one. They're choosing not to. That's not a conclusion, but that's a thing you can inference. You can say, yeah. Yeah, I did on that. Comes with the phone. So Yesware tells you a lot of things, but I only use it to tell me when emails are opened by people. So if I'm going to go do something, I send an email to somebody saying, OK, I'm going to go do this, I will check and make sure they got that email. Not everybody replies to every email. That's part of the thing. Some people don't reply to emails. They don't say, got it. You know, typically, if I receive an email from somebody and there's no question at the end, there's no, it's just a statement, hey, I need you to go do this. Some people say, well, they didn't ask for a reply. So I didn't reply. They just said, go do this. I will generally say, OK, got it. I'll reply even though a reply wasn't requested. Some people don't reply. So knowing that they read the email, to me at least tells me, OK, he didn't reply, but I know he got my message. So I can hold that person accountable for what I said. Now, Boomerang, what do you think Boomerang is? OK. So Boomerang enables you to put a date on when you want to send an email. In other words, you just don't have to send it now. Yeah. 
or the person getting it doesn't look like it's close to you. So you're in the middle of doing something, you're going through your stuff. Typically what we do right now is we say, I don't need to respond to that, right? I don't need to respond to that email today, but then you forget. That's a good question. I don't know if you can link it here. I don't know if you can link it here, but we'll talk about that's a, that's a good thing for number five. It's sort of under collaboration. Take it off. Okay, so Boomerang enables you to set a date you want emails to go out. That makes you a very, very much more productive person. If you set aside an hour at night to go do work because you want to be ahead of the game tomorrow, well, instead of sending an email that says you sent it at 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, which doesn't always look good. People don't always like somebody sending emails at 10 o'clock at night. In fact, there's something I read that good managers should not be sending emails late at night because it makes people think that what? Well, that, what else does it make you think if you get an email from your boss at 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> They're on drugs? Okay, what else? Okay. Or that your boss thinks you might be working at 10 o'clock at night, which is an imposition on your personal time. It also might make you think, this guy needs to get a life. Yeah. So, in this thing, I don't, I don't remember who wrote it. it might have been Harvard Business Review. But the point was, if you're a manager, don't send emails to your people at night. No good comes up. What can you do with Boomerang? You do it at night, you send it in the morning. They don't know when you wrote it. You might have gotten up early to do it. So for uh, one of the publications we have is electronic a newsletter, the Chow Two team. That goes out at 9.15 Monday morning. Why 9.15? Why Monday? Let's start with why Monday. Start of a work week. Okay. Why 9.15? Why not 8? Yeah. Because people have their first wave. When they come into work, it's, uh, you know, what's on their brain? Uh. What are all the emails that I, well, when you're sitting down? What are all the emails I need to go through that came in since last Friday? And you have all of your crap and spam and whatever. You don't want to get lost. Or when we do our electronic chow chu tea, we don't want to get lost in the, oh, crap, what's all the stuff i got to go over first thing Monday morning? So we want to be in the second way, the 915 way. You know, the guy's already cleaned up. His inbox is already clean, feeling pretty good. Now, had his cup of coffee, talked to his pals about what he did over the weekend, now ready to get started with work, and then we send it at 9 p.m. This is in your what inbox? An event or something you posted. Okay, so Boomerang enables you to create something and send it later. Or there's a setting that is if you send this email and you don't get a response, it'll send it again and you can say when you want it sent again. That's pretty cool, right? You think most people do that? Most people don't do that. So uh, now we'll go back to events. Uh, Gmail 
now we're talking about your your calendar and Gmail. We're talking about those two things. So what do we do? We get an email from somebody and it says, "Hey, let's go have lunch next week. Let's meet for lunch next week." What do we normally do? We click reply, right? We click the reply button and say what? Yes, no, maybe. Whatever we do. Okay, so we want to break that habit. Because let's say you reply yes. Now what do you have to do? So you don't forget. Now you need to go to your calendar, right? And create an event. Okay? So Google has an has created this little feature where when you have it, what we need to do is develop the habit so when you have an email and it talks about something in the future, instead of pushing the reply button, you push the more button. And when you push the more button, a drop down window pop, a drop down window opens up. And one of the choices on there is called create event. And when you click on that button that says create event, it takes you to what? Your calendar. It takes you to your calendar page like you're creating an event on your calendar because you are. You have to fill in the information that you normally do on your calendar. Okay. What is it? Where is it? When is it? Who's it with? Etc. One of the things that's automatically done, though, is it's automatically set up to send an email to the person who sent you the email in the first place. And it marks it on your calendar's event. But go back one step before that. It adds on there the name of the person who sent you the original email. So it's going to send them one, and it gives you the opportunity to add other people. So when you click Save or Done, it's going to say, do you want to send an email to these people? Say yes. They, then instead of getting a reply that says, OK, great, I'll meet you next week for, for drinks, they get a reply that is an invitation to an event that asks them, OK, drinks next week, 5 o'clock at this place. And they say yes, no, whatever. That then updates your calendar. So it automatically does your calendar stuff for you. You don't have to say to somebody, hey, how about Tuesday? He sends you an email, let's do this. You reply, how about Tuesday? He says yes. And you got to go to your calendar and create the event. This one, instead of replying to the email, you hit create event. Fill in all the details. It copies his email. His original email gets copied into your description section. So you know what it's about. And you can add to that. You can attach a document to it if you want. You can set it up as a hangout where it's a phone call. All of this stuff is automatically in there. And it goes to your calendar. And you can have your calendar shared with your supervisor. So they always know what you're doing. Now, using the categorical imperative, would it be good for a business if they never missed appointments? Absolutely. Okay. We have to break the habit of hitting reply. That's not easy. That's a thing we have to do. And so we're talking about it now. And then we're going to do it tomorrow. And then we're going to try to get in the habit of not replying, of only replying to emails that don't have a future meeting date. Okay, so email replies exchanges should be an exchange of information, not an exchange of action. If you're going to have to do something, chances are that's something that should be on your calendar and your calendar should be shared with the people you want. So, you know, we have it set up for the magazine that Keith will set up appointments for me to go do interviews. 
I get added to the event. So he sets up the time. He adds it. I get invited. I say yes. The other person says yes. Keith is watching this. If both parties don't say yes, he knows i got to reschedule. If I say no, he knows I have to reschedule. I don't even have to discuss this for one second with Keith. Does that save time? Yeah, it saves huge time. And it reduces the amount of mistakes that can be made uh, because nothing needs to be repeated. Now, having said all this, though, we've got this is the last thing, then we'll leave it open for in case people in California or here have questions. Having said that, email is becoming less important. What do we use primarily here as a way to communicate? Huh? Okay, Hangouts is part of what? Plus, right. So we primarily use Google Plus as a way to communicate. Why would that be the case? Huh? Okay, that's one reason. Because we don't need to. But here's what happens. I send an email. Two people. Okay. So how many emails are there? If this person, so that's two. If this person gets reply all, how many do they send? They're going to send two, right? This guy is going to. So now, one email, I now have three replies. If I hit reply all, but I have three replies, but how many emails are in this what's called a thread? Everybody has three. I got three, he got three, he got three. There's nine replies, there's nine things in this thread. And pretty soon it starts getting very unwieldy. Because what if this email and this email replies don't match? This guy says, let's have lunch on Tuesday. This guy says, let's have lunch on Wednesday. Now what? You can get pretty hairy, right? And then um, it just goes down. And you'll see in Gmail. After the email, it will show you how many different emails back and forth there have been, how many emails are in the thread. I have some today that I have 10 emails in this thread. What if I need to go find one particular email? It gets to be very cumbersome. In um, Google+, Plus, everything is, is there, one place for everybody to see the same thing. So I post a document to a circle. I post a document to a circle. And who's ever in the circle, whoever's ever in the circle gets notified that I posted something, right? That's how it works. I create an event in the morning. I post it to this circle, and everybody who's in that circle gets notification. You can reply, right? You know that on Google+. You can hit a response, and that goes right back into the circle so everybody can see what you said, unless you want to make it private. But the default is you can reply to what I said. So now what happens is one person, I could be looking at this, and I just see everything very simply, very clear. It's much easier. And I don't have to be typing all of this email address and all these other things. It's just much easier. So we here generally use 
Google Plus. Other people like using Facebook. Other people like using Twitter. Email is becoming less um, the, the default because there are other ways to do things better. So when you go to work, as much as possible, you want to create circles. Circles with your coworkers, your boss, your customers, prospective customers, all of these people. So you send one message, everybody gets it. They reply to that, you see it, and you don't have to be going through your emails that said, oh, here's a response from Monica. Here's a response from Ed. Here's a response from uh, Velvet. You don't have different responses from different people. They're all just in one place. Okay. Any questions in California? Anybody got any questions? Not no questions here, Ed. Okay. So the expectation is that everybody will review this one time, and tomorrow we're going to review it and move forward by applying it. And this was part of my further discussions with Nolan regarding how do we how do we get people to remember this information. So it's kind of like we're telling you what we're going to tell you. Tomorrow we're going to tell you, and then our follow-up will be we told you, we'll tell you what we told you. Okay? So we we'll have, follow up with that. Yeah, we have two new students. Oh, great. Let's meet the new students so we can get them set up here. Okay. Just a second. And where's, oh, did you? Okay, you can get right here. Can you stand right there by this chair here? He'll be able to see you. He can see you right now. That's you in the corner there. He can hear you. Hi, everyone. Uh -huh. This is Maria Murguia. Maria. And where are you from, Maria? Los Angeles. What part? Uh, South I live in South what what is that, Dennis? Southgate. Southgate. Okay. Great. Southgate. And Maria, where uh, what course what program are you in at Larson? I'm taking the bookkeeping Bookkeeping? The bookkeeping. And what did Maria Maria, what did you do before for work? She worked at a company as an HR assistant. She worked at, as a human resources assistant. Oh, good. Great. Great. Good. So you'll be very helpful when we get to the uh, employment planning part. <laughs> so welcome. You're, you're in good hands with Dennis and Rose, Maria, and we'll be seeing you here on this every day. So if you could send me an email, I'll make sure to add you to the circles so you get um, notification every every day of the, the classes we have. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Yeah. And here's our next student, Jose. Jose. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jose Meta. I'm from San Diego, Mexico. I've been in San Diego for 45 years. Uh, I'm business on the automotive uh, paints. Now, now I'm learning a new trade. Good. Uh, what now? What is Jose taking? I'm taking uh, bookkeeping, accounting, and auditing. The bookkeeping, accounting. Oh, okay. Bookkeeping. Okay, so we have a student here whose name is Jose B. Jose. <laughs> Jose. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a Nevada joke. Okay. Oh, wow. okay. Four twenty again. So, um, now, uh, and Jose, what part of Los Angeles do you live in? Wilmington. Wilmington. Oh, Wilmington. Okay, Wilmington. 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 That's off of what freeway is Wilmington? Long Beach. Freeway or Long Beach Freeway? Okay. Okay. So, Luis, are you from there? Okay, so one of our students used to live in San Pedro. Yeah, 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 that's near there. Exactly. Okay. Good. Okay, well, great. So please send me an email, and then I will add you to the circles. I will. Thank you, Jose. Nice meeting you. And Maria. Okay. okay. We'll see you tomorrow, Ed. Thanks, Dennis. Bye. You're welcome.